Hey, chickadees. All right, it's time for another calendar lesson with some math and some reading. So let's get started. Okay, so let's look at our calendar. Today is it's our last video for April. So today is Wednesday, April 29th, 2020. The next time we do another video, we're going to have our May calendar. Okay, our weather today is sunny, so I'm going to put another sun here. And we have been in school 149 days, so we have to fix our ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm. Okay, so 149, let's count by tens to 100. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So there's our 100, here's our 40, and then here's our nine ones for 149. Here's our 149 on our hundreds chart. We're going to do some practicing with 10 more and 10 less. Um, in just a minute with a hundred chart, but let's look at 149 and let's see if we can figure out what 10 less than 149 is. So let's look on our thing. So here's 149 to get 10 less, we go this way. So 10 less than 149 is 139. 10 more than 149 is 159. Now, what if we do one more? And one less. So if we do one more, we've got to go right this way. Mm -hmm. So one more than 149 is 150. One less than 149, we have to go backwards, is 148. Okay, let's do 10 and some more. So we have 10 and 6 more, 10 plus 6. So 10, 11, 10. Okay, how many do we have? 10 and 6 more. We have our 10 and 6 more. How many is that? 10 and 6 more is 16. Okay, let's do another one. Ooh, 10 and 0 more. 10 plus 0. So we'd have to take this away. 10 plus 0. And how many do we have? 10 plus 0 equals 10. All right, one more. Let me put this back. Okay, 10 plus 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And how many do we have? 10 and 5 more. Here's our 10 and 5 ones. That's 15, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 10 plus 5 equals 15. Okay, we're going to do 10 more and 10 less on some of these. And on some of them, we're going to do one more and one less. So let's see. We'll start with 22. Let's do 10 less than 22. So here's 22. If we want to do 10 less, are we going to go up one? or down one on our 100 chart pattern. Okay, if we're doing 10 less, we're going to go up towards the beginning. So 22, 10 less than 22 is 12. Okay, let's do 10 more this time. So here's 22, what's 10 more? Are we going to go up one or down one? on our column. We're going to go down one for 10 more because we're getting closer to 
or this side for 100. So 10 more than 22 is 32. Okay. Now for 27, we're going to do one more and one less. So here's 27. Now, what's one more than 27? All we have to do is go one space on the hundreds chart. We're not going to go up or down because that's going by tens. We're just going to go forward one. So if we go forward one, that like blacks it out. I don't want to use that one. Sorry. Okay. If we go forward one, here's 27. Let's go forward one. 28 is one more. Okay. Now let's look at one less than 27. To find out what one less than 27 is on our hundreds chart, we just go backwards one. So we're going this way one. So 27, what's one less than 27? 26. One more than 27 is 28. One less than 27 is 26. Okay. Let's look at 70 and we'll do 10 less and 10 more. Okay, so here's 70. What's 10 more than 70? So we're going to go down one on our tens column. So 70 and 10 more is 80. Okay, now let's do 10 less. We look at 70. And we go back, or we go up one column in our 10. So one less than 70 is 60. So 10 more than 70 is 80. 10 less than 70 is 60. Okay, now let's do one more and one less. Let's find 85. Here's 85 right here. We're going to do one more and one less. Okay, so here's 85. To find out one more than 85, we go to the next number. So 85, what's one more than 85? 86. Now, here's 85, what's one less than 85? We go backwards one space, one less than 85 is 84. So 84, 85, 86 is our sequence. One more than 85 is 86. One less than 85 is 84. Okay, we're going to do an addition story today by looking at our picture. So first I want you to look at your picture and see what animals you see. Now, I want you to look in our barn or farm picture, and I want you to look for the baby chicks, find the baby chicks, and find the mom hens. So we're going to count hens and chicks today and find the total, okay? So first, I want you to find the mom hens, the mama hens. Do you see them? Okay, so let's count and see how many mama hens we have. We're going to count the mama hens and the baby chicks, and we're going to find our total of how many chickens there are all together. So first, let's find the mama hens. And let's see, do you see them? All the way up here in the top. So let's see, one, two, three. So we've got three mama hens. We're going to start with three. And now let's look for our baby chicks. Where are the baby chicks? Do you see them? Oh, here they are. All right, let's count and see how many baby chicks there are. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there's five baby chicks, three mama hens. Okay, now let's count them all together. So we know there's five right here. Let's hold five in our head and let's count up. Five, six, seven, eight. So three plus five is eight. So how many chickens are there? Counting the moms and the babies, there are eight. Three plus five is eight. If you wanted to do the related fact, you just change the order of the add-ins. Five plus three is eight, or three plus five is eight. And that tells us the total of how many chicks and 
hens there are. So total chickens together. Now let's practice some adding. I wanted to show you a different way to write an addition equation, just in case you've never seen it this way. I want you to be ready if you see this in first grade some. Now you can do it either way. You can do our equals on this side, like we're used to doing three plus five equals eight. We usually put the um, add-ins first and then the equal sign and then our total goes last, but you can turn it around and you can have the total first and then your equal signs and then equal sign and then your add-ins can go next. So you can start with the total and then try to find the add-ins. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to start with our total and our equal signs and then we're going to fill in our add-ins. Okay, so there's many different ways to do this pro these problems that we're going to do today, but I'm going to show you a few ways. Okay, now, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with three. That's our total. We're going to look at three in our five frame. And then we're going to find two add-ins to make three. Okay, so we can do this several ways. We start with three. How many red can you have and how many yellow can you have to make three? Now, if we were doing on, this on the carpet, I would get you guys to all do it in your journal. And then I would see what all kind of um, combinations you came up with. But we're just going to kind of go through some different combinations today. Okay, so if I had one red, how many yellow counters can I have? So three, uh-oh, I don't know how that happened. Let me go back. Okay, so one red counter. And then how many yellow counters do I need to make three? Can you see the spaces right here that I added? So how many yellow do we need? We can have one red and two yellows to make three. So three equals one plus two. Or if you wanted to change the order, and put the yellow put the yellow ones first you could change them around and do two plus one equals three that's how we would change our order of our add-ins or we could do two red like that we could do two red and one yellow to make three so Three equals two plus one, or three equals one plus two. You could do it either way. It's a related fact. So those are our two related facts for three. Now let's look and see different ways that we can make four as our total. So let's start with four spaces in our five frame. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now, what if I start with one red? How many yellows would I have to make four? Can you see? So one plus one, two, three, one red, plus three yellow equals four. We could change the order of our add-ins here. Four equals three red. And one yellow. So three plus one equals four, or one plus three equals four. You can change the order around if you want to. Okay, let's look at a couple different ways that we could do four. Okay, so we had three and one, so I'm gonna put this over here. What if we had two red? How many yellows would we need to make four? Four equals two plus two. 
So 4 equals 2 plus 2. Now this is a double, so if we change the order of our add-ins, it's still going to be the same. 4 equals, I don't know what happened there. 4 equals 2 plus 2. Now, I'm going to put a few different varieties over here. Now, what if we had four red counters? How many yellows would we need to make four? So if we have four, how many yellows do we need to make four? We would have zero, right? We'd have zero yellows to make four because we already have four red. And the same thing would go if we change the order of the add-ins and we had zero reds and four yellows. So four equals zero plus four, or four plus zero, Oops, sorry. Okay, now let's go to our last one. We have five, so we need all five spaces filled up. Now, how are we going to make a total of five? What if we had two yellow, two red, sorry, what if we have two red counters? How many yellow counters do we need to make five? Can you see the empty spaces? One, two, three. So two plus three is five. If you change the order of the add-ins, it would be three plus two equals five. Either way, but let's do a different combination. Put these up here just a little bit because these go with four. One and three, two and two. Okay, now what if you had one yellow? How many reds would you need to make five? Let's see. Can you see? One, two, three, four. Four reds and one yellow that equals five. Five equals four plus one, or five equals one plus four. You could change the order of your add ins around. Okay, guys, now we're going to do a subtraction sentence um, looking at this picture. So I want you to focus on the picture um, and see what you notice. I want you to see some of the things. And I want you to focus in on some of the different objects you might see and how we might make some subtraction sentences out of them. So we did one earlier today with addition. And when we add, our answer gets bigger and our answer is called the sum. Now we're going to look at these thinking about subtracting. And when we subtract, our answer gets smaller. And our answer when we subtract is called the difference. So look around and see what objects you can think of to make a subtraction sentence. And then I'm going to tell you which ones we're going to work on. Okay, now I want you to look and focus on the balloons in the picture. And I can tell that one balloon has gotten deflated. There's no air in there. So let's see how many balloons we would have started with. And let's count that deflated balloon too. So let's look. One, two, three, four, five. So we started with five balloons at our party. And then how many of the balloons lost their air or are deflated? There's one balloon that's deflated. Okay, so we started with five balloons. One balloon is deflated and lost its air. How many balloons do we have left? 
That's right. Five balloons minus one balloon equals four balloons. Five minus one equals four. Now, when we subtract, we can't change the order of our numbers to make a related fact. Related facts, we really only talk about when we are adding. So we're going to start with our biggest number. We start with the total. When we subtract, we take away. And then when we subtract, our answer gets smaller. And our answer is called the difference. OK, let's practice some. So let's look at our first problem. We have 4 minus 1 equals. So we're going to start with 4 counters. Okay, and we're going to take one counter away, and then we'll see how many counters we have left. So, 4 minus 1 equals 1, 2, 3. 4 minus 1 equals 3. Okay, let's go to our next one. 5 minus 2. 1, 2, 3. Four, five, and I had to overlap them just a little bit so they could fit. One, two, three, four, five. So we started with five. We're taking two away. Five minus two. And how many do we have left? One, two, three. Five minus two equals three. Three minus three. So we start with the first number. One, two, three. So we start with three. And then the next number tells us how many to take away. Three minus three. So let's take three away. And how many counters do we have left? Zero. 3 minus 3 equals 0. Okay. Our last one for subtracting, 5 minus 4. So we'll, this number tells us how many to start with. One, two, three, four, five. The first number tells us how many to start with. The next number after the minus sign, minus four, tells us how many to take away. So it says minus four, so let's take four away. One, two, three, four. Now how many counters do we have left? Five minus four equals one. There's one counter left. So let's go back and look at all of our equations and we'll kind of review what we found out today. When we subtract, our answer gets smaller. When we subtract, our answer is called the difference. Now let's look at the equations we did today. 4 minus 1 equals 3. 5 minus 2 equals 3. 3 minus 3 equals 0. And 5 minus 4 equals 1. Okay guys, we're going to do a little word search, word um, sort today. We're going to read a word, we're going to say all the sounds that we hear in the word, and then we're going to sort it to either a short vowel sound or a long vowel sound. So let's look at this first word, no, no. Let's say all the sounds in no. Mm, oh. Now, does that have a short vowel sound or a long vowel sound? No. You can hear the O oh say its name in no. So that is a long vowel sound. So we'll put it there now. Let's see another one. This word is not. Not. Let's say all the sounds in not. Not. Okay. Is this one a short vowel sound or a long vowel sound? 
This one, not, is a short vowel sound. It does not have the long vowel sound because it has the ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. The vowel does not say its name in not. Okay, this word is nut. Let's say the sounds. Mm, uh, t. Is this a long vowel word or a short vowel word? Nut. Let's listen to the middle sound. Uh, uh, uh. You can hear the uh sound in nut, and so we know this is a short vowel sound also. This word is mole. Let's say all the sounds in mole. Mole. Mm now let's look at the vowel sound. O, O, O. The O says its name in mole. You can see this vowel consonant E pattern. So mole is a long vowel word. All right, this word is home. Let's say all the sounds in home. Huh. Um. Now let's pretend like we're doing our roller coaster for our letters, and let's do the middle sound. Oh, oh, oh. And when we hear the middle sound in home, the O says its name. And we also see the vowel consonant E, so we know this is a long vowel word too. Home. Nose. Mm, oh, now let's look. Nose. Is this a short vowel word or a long vowel word? I see the vowel consonant E, so I know that this vowel O oh, is going to say its name in nose. This is a long vowel word as well. And mute. Let's say all the sounds in mute. Mute. Let's say the middle sound. U, U, U. And you can hear the vowel U saying its name in mute. We see the vowel consonant E pattern, so we know this is also a long vowel word. Mute. Let's say all, let's go back and read all of our words short vowel and long vowel words. Not, nut, mute, no. Mole, home, and nose. Okay, let's do some word work here. Let's change some vowel sounds. This word is fame. Change A to U. Fume. Mole. Change O to U. Mule. Rope. Change O to I. Ripe. Cone. Change O to A. Cane. Right. Change I to O. Wrote. Dime. Change I to O. Dome. Mate. Change A to U. Mute. Note. Change O to A. Nate. Spoke. Change O to I. Spike. Okay, this is a link to a video that I love. It's a Raffi song called Apples and Bananas. I like to eat apples and bananas. I could not get this video link to work as a recording. Um, so I'm going to put the link to that 
in the description of this video so you can click on it. I will give you the gist of the song if you will just bear with me and my um, singing here. But this was one of my favorite Raffi songs when I was in kindergarten and it's called I Like to Eat Apples and Bananas and it changes all the sounds in the words to long vowel words. So here, come and play with me. I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Now let's change it to the vowel sound for oat. I like to, for o, o. I like to oat, oat, oat. Opals and bananas. I like to oat, oat, oat. Opals and bananas. Okay, so that was long O. Let's change it to long A. I like to ate, ate, ate. Apples and bananas. I like to ate, ate, ate. Apples and bananas. Okay, let's do long E. I like to eat. Apples and bananas. I like to eat, eat, eat. Apples and bananas. Okay, last one is a U sound. I like to oot, oot, oot. Apples and bananas. I like to oot, oot, oot. Apples and bananas. Okay, I will link this video if you want to hear Rafi sing it, singing it. He sings it much better than I do. But you get the idea of the long vowel sounds A, E, I, O, and U. Okay, guys, our reading part of the lesson is a little bit different today because we're going to work on some comprehension strategies. Now, the comprehension strategy I want to tell you about today is the main topic, okay? So every book that we read has a main topic, and I want you guys to be thinking about this as you read because it'll help you learn from what you read. The main topic is what a book, a part of a book, or a part of a book, is all about. So you can think about the main topic of one part or the main topic of a whole book. When you are reading or listening to an informational book, you can ask, what is this book about and what are the key details? And key details are the, the little parts of the story that give us hints about what everything is about in the story. The main topic is what the key details are all about. So the key details are the main parts of the story and the main topic is what the story is mainly about. Now an informational book, that is one of our nonfiction books. It's real. The author writes a nonfiction or an information book to give us real facts and real information about a topic. And we read an informational or a nonfiction book so that we can learn more about something. So today we have a nonfiction or an informational book called Birds Build Big. Here's our title page, Birds Build Big. Now the reason our author, Amy Kraft, wrote this book is to give us some real facts and real information about birds building really big nests. So I want you to keep that in mind as we read our story today, Birds Build Big, and we're going to go back and connect it to make a real, to think about the real main topic of the story, Birds Build Big. Have you ever been in an apartment building? It is a big building with many small homes inside. Here's an apartment building. Some birds make nests this way too. They are called weaver birds. And here's our picture of a weaver bird nest. So, so far I want you to be thinking in this real book, nonfiction or informational book, I want you to be thinking what everything is all about. What's the main thing? Weaver birds live in the desert in Africa. These little birds build big nests. More than 400 birds might live in one nest. Each bird family has its own room. The birds make tunnels to connect the rooms. 
the nest is like an apartment building. So they're making a net connection there. So you can see how the apartment building is like the bird nest. So the apartment building is a, is a building that has many small homes inside. And they're making the connection to this big nest that has different rooms for each family of birds inside. The nest has many small rooms inside it. And you can see the big nest. Weaver birds work together. They use straw to make a nest. The birds stuff straw into sides of the bottom of the nest. This makes the nest bigger. The birds work on a nest for years. One nest might be as big as your classroom. Many weaver birds work together on a nest. You can see them, looks like kind of like they're upside down to me, but you can see them stuffing the little, little uh, straw to make the nest, make the different rooms in the big nest. A big nest protects weaver birds and their eggs. Snakes and hawks want to eat the eggs. The sharp, spiky straw in the big nest keeps them away. So you can see here in the picture, here's the caption, the spiky straw keeps the snake out. So all the little birds are safe in there because of the spiky straw that can keep snakes and hawks away from the weaver birds. The big nest makes the shade that keeps the birds cool. Feathers and grass in each room keep the birds warm. Rain runs off the slanted roof. The birds stay dry. Weaver birds know how to work and live together. They know how to build big. A big nest protects weaver birds. So you can see the gigantic nest in this tree. And look at the different things it's telling us about. So it says that there are feathers and grass in each room to keep the birds warm. And there's shade when it's hot so that the birds stay cool. Can, they can stay in the shade of the roof. And rain runs off the slanted roof so that the birds stay dry. Isn't that amazing? Now, we're going to look at a question. And we're going to go back just like we were doing this um, in our little packets that we did with our highlighters. We're going to go back and we're going to highlight the answer in a story. So let's look. We're going to find the answer to this one on page one. What are inside both a weaver bird nest and an apartment building? So we're going to go back and look. Are there many people inside an apartment and a weaver bird nest? Are there weaver birds in apartments and weaver bird nests? Are there small homes in a weaver bird nest and apartment building? So let's go back and look for the answer. We're going to highlight it when we find it. So let's go back to page one. Oh, there's our title page right there. Okay, so we're looking here. Have you ever been in, a, in an apartment building? It is a big building with many small homes inside. Some birds make nests this way too. They are called weaver birds. So weaver birds have homes inside. Now look, here we go. Homes inside an apartment building and homes for birds inside a weaver nest. So there's our, there's our answer right there. Let's see if we can highlight it on here. What are inside both a weaver bird nest and apartment buildings? Are many people in both? A bird nest and an apartment building? No, we don't have people in a bird nest for sure. Now, weaver birds, are they inside bird nests and in an apartment building? They're not in both, are they? They'll just be in the bird nest, not in the apartment building. So our answer is C, small homes are inside weaver bird nests and an apartment building. Okay, here's question two. We're gonna go back and find the answer in just a minute. How many birds live in weaver bird nests? So is it just one? Is it a lot or is it two? So let's go back and we'll look to see. I'm gonna highlight our answer. Okay, there's the first page, here's the second one. Weaver birds live in the desert in Africa. These little birds build big nests. More than 400 birds might live in one nest. So you can see that lots of birds live in one nest. So let's go and find the best answer here. So would one bird be the best answer? No, or two birds wouldn't be the best answer either, but many birds would be the best answer here because it says up to 400 birds could live in one nest. 
So the picture of mini birds would definitely be the best answer. Okay, let's look at our next question. What makes the nest a safe place for weaver birds? The nest is made with sharp, spiky straw. The nest has many eggs inside it. The nest is home for hundreds of birds. So let's go back. We're going to go back to page four and see if we can see the best answer here. I, I think I skipped it. The big nest protects weaver birds and their eggs. Snakes and hawks want to eat the eggs. The sharp, spiky straw in the big nest keeps them away. So here's what keeps them safe. The sharp, spiky straw in the big nest keeps them away. So let's go find our, big, our best answer here. What makes the nest a safe place for weaver birds? The nest is made with sharp, spiky straw. The nest has many eggs inside it, and the nest is home for hundreds of birds. So the only thing, the only answer that would be the best choice is the nest is made with sharp spiky straw. So that's what makes it a safe place. It wouldn't be safe just because it has eggs inside of it or that it's home for hundreds of birds. But the things that would make it safe for the weaver birds is that it would have sharp spiky straw to protect them. Okay, and this is our last question. Oh, actually, no, it's not, sorry. How does the nest keep birds, weaver birds dry? So how does the nest keep weaver birds dry? The nest makes shade, the nest has feathers, or the nest has a roof. I can tell really by not going back, but we're going to go back just to make sure you can find it. Okay, so our question was, sorry for the flipping here. The question was, how does the nest keep the birds dry? So let's go back. Okay, the big nest makes shade that keeps the birds cool. So that tells how they keep cool. But our question said dry. Feathers and grass in each room keep the birds warm. Rain runs off the slanted roof. The birds stay dry. Okay, so that was our question. How do the birds stay dry? Rain runs off the slanted roof. The birds stay dry. So there's our answer right there. Let's go find the best answer on our multiple choice. How does the nest keep weaver birds dry? The nest makes shade. No, that doesn't keep them dry. The nest has feathers. No, that doesn't keep them dry either. The nest has a roof that keeps them dry. And if you go back to the picture, you can see how the slanted roof I showed you earlier when we were reading, this slanted part of the roof makes the water run off and then it keeps the birds dry. Okay, so let's see what our last question is now for real. What is the whole text mostly about? And that's what we were talking about earlier. The main idea, the main topic of the story. So what is the, te the whole text mostly about? Weaver birds learn to live in the desert. Weaver birds like having, sorry, weaver birds like living in apartments. And weaver birds build and live in big nests. So if we go to the last page, let me clear this off so that we can. Got it. Okay. So we talked about all the different things that makes up the nest. So those are all key details. How the nest makes shade to keep the birds cool, feathers and grass in each room keep the birds warm, and rain runs off the slanted roof. Those are all very key details on how the nest keeps them protected and safe. But here's our big idea. Weaver birds know how to work and live together. They know how to build, build big because every single page in our book was talking about how weaver birds build their nests so that they can stay safe. So that's what the main thing is. It was about how they build their nests. So our, let's see, was it about weaver birds learning to live in the desert? No, that wasn't the main thing that it was about. Was it about weaver birds like to live in apartments? It was not about that either. It was about weaver birds build and live in big nests. So the whole story was mainly about that. Weaver birds build and live in big nests. And it was about different things that made it good for them to live in the big nest. So next time you're reading a book, I want you to think about what the main topic is. And let's just go back to that first little thing that told us about the main topic. The main topic is what a book, a part of a book is all about. And when you're reading or listening to in, an informational book or a nonfiction book, you can think about what is this book all about? And what are the key details? So 
the book that we just read was about how weaver birds build big nests. And we had, had lots of key details in there to support that main idea. A. All. Am. And. As. At. Be. Boy. But. Can. Did. Do. Down. For. Girl. Go. Had. Has. Have. He. Her. Him. His. I. N. Is. It. Little. Look. Not. Of, on, other, out, said, see, she, so, some, that the then there they to up was we were what, when, with, you,